All right, so welcome back, everyone. So no real intro on this one. We're just going to get right into it. So what I have for you today is a Jason Clark Tonto. So it's not exactly the most creative name out there, but I think this one here is a damn good knife. If you're into customs, there's a good chance you already know about Jason Clark knives. Might even have been your first custom. And I say that because Jason is one of those entry-level makers. Compare him to most other makers out there, and you'll see that he puts out more knives in the next leading competition, and he tends to do it at better prices too. This guy's been at it for a while, and he kind of developed his own style. And you kind of see that style front and center here. So Jason is known for his long and slender designs. And a lot of his stuff has the same profile as his Tonto right here. They're all easy to carry, they take up minimal space in the pocket, and they flip like a dream. And that's the other thing he's known for. As you get a stupid smooth IKBS action on each one of his knives. I mean, just take a look at this one right here. I didn't even flip it all that hard, and you can kind of see the action. It only This knife only has a medium to light detent here, but that blade just wants to keep going all the way. Even if I tilt it up like this, it doesn't take much to really get it all the way out. I mean, sure, you can fail it if you really don't try. The detent's not exactly strong enough to make it, make it flawless, but... Put any effort behind the flip, it's 100% reliable. And part of that just has to do with the way the man does his flippers. I mean, just take a look at this one right here. Look at the way that one's angled. This thing's basically perfect. He always does some checkering on the top as well. Even without it though, the shape is already good enough to really make it a good flipper. But add that checkering there, and I think that really does elevate it. So you guys are probably used to jimping on flipper tabs. This is something else entirely. Once your finger gets on that flipper, it's not going anywhere. You will not slip off of this one here. It's like jimping on steroids, but it's not exactly overly aggressive either. One thing I'll just kind of mention as a side note though, especially as older knives, the flipper will sometimes not be all that well chamfered. And since he checkers it, that checkering extends all the way to the edges over here. So when it's not well chamfered, you end up with like basically small metal spikes on the edge of your flipper. You get like a bed of needles effect when you flip it head on, but if you brush against the side of those, some of the older ones, it'll scratch you and the inside of your pockets too. It's not the case on this one, but I'm just putting that info out there. I'm already getting distracted. Um, okay, but anyways, um, but now let's get into a model's namesake. The blade shape on this one is in this aggressive drop point American Tonto right here. And I just love it. It has this deep swedge up top that runs about two thirds of the spine and it just completes the look. It's well done and still leaves a good place for your thumb over here when you're actually cutting. Because some knives kind of take the swedge too far back and it doesn't feel all that comfortable when you're putting your thumb over there, especially if you're pushing down. So blade on this one is in CPM 154 and I really like how he put the, that marking right over here. You kind of see it on the lock face right there. It's not always there on all his knives, but when it is there, it's different and it's completely hidden from the sides. Like you wouldn't really notice it unless you really turn it this way. So 154 is, his dis is basically his default steel, kind of like everyone else out there. But Jason does use CTS XHP pretty often. With, uh, with the Tonto blades, I, with Tonto blades just basically in general, I always like to say the more American the better. I love the look of it and having that Tonto point front and center that's the whole reason for having a Tonto. It's great for utility work, and it lets you get a stupid strong tip here. And you take a look at the grinds on this one right here, and you can tell this is real. This is a really strong blade. You notice this flat that runs this part up here? That goes all the way over here. And it's basically full thickness up until he grinds this front bevel right here. This part is still full thickness. And there's only about like a quarter inch until you reach the tip right here. So, what does that mean? It means you're not going to be cutting much with that front edge right there. It's just kind of too thick for it. But it also means that it's basically indestructible. You need to do something really stupid to really damage this thing. It'll never really slice, but you don't really need it to. That's just what the rest of the blade is for. So the finish on this one is in the standard two-tone satin that you kind of see right here. Horizontal satin on the flats, vertical satin on the grinds. It's not hand rubbed or anything, but very clean work. 
It's perfectly symmetrical on both sides. You close this up, come back here and you'll see a polished zirconium pivot right here. I mean, bolster right here. So zirconium is a great material. It's one of my favorites. You can't really get titanium black normally, but with this stuff, it's pretty easy. All you really need to do is heat it up and you get a nice even black. You even do it on a lot of different finishes too. So you polish this one here to get that perfect shiny black that you see right there. And the thing you'll notice is that the pivot isn't really visible from the front here. Jason does a lot of bolstered knives. On those, he always hides the pivot underneath the bolster. And it kind of really gives the front a cleaner look than what you'd normally see. So there are two screws that hold that bolster in place, but they're pretty much... They're not really all that noticeable. They're a lot smaller than the, what the pivot would be. I think it's like Torx T6 right here. So most of our makers would show the pivot. So this is something different to not see it there. And it's just kind of neat to have something different, I guess. So back here, this is something interesting. I have not seen this material on any other knife. This right here, the scale is made out of Ducarta. So I haven't heard of it either. It's basically micarta, so basically stabilized layers of cloth, but made in a way where the layers aren't exactly even. So when you grind it, you end up getting a pattern like this right here. That's why it kind of still has that cloth look to it. So it's meant to mimic Timascus patterns, except it's not nearly as clean. So if you, and the other thing is, let me see if I can show it. Okay, I might not be able to show it, but if I get the light just right, you can kind of see some voids there. And I'm not going to say the voids are Jason's problem. It's just the nature of the material here. But I will say that this material just kind of works well. The pattern isn't nearly as sharp as it would be on Timascus, but it's also it only costs almost like a small fraction of the price. So I'd say it's really worth it. And I do love the look of it. And the other thing is basically, since it's micarta, it's just made from dyed cloth. So you can pretty much get any color you want. You can't really do black and green with Timascus anyways, so here it just works. Moving on to the backside, you'll see it's just working finish. It's just a working finish titanium lock side, but I want you guys to notice the details here. Everything on it, all the sides here, it's all rounded. Like you don't like if you look over the lock bar relief right here. It kind of looks like it's sharp, but you run your finger over it and you feel that there's a ledge there, but you don't feel any corners. Even when you have the blade out, this corner right here, it's left from the lock bar moving, that's rounded as well. I'm touching this inner edge right here, that's rounded as well. This is the kind of attention to detail that I want to see from all knives. The only sharp part I want on my knife should be the blade. I also really appreciate it when makers realize that they're able to do something with the lock side of a knife. Like this whole pattern that Jason drilled right here, it's doing a lot to keep this from being another boring titanium plain lock side. And yes, if you look closely, those holes are actually chamfered as well. So I really like it when he leaves a satin ring on those chamfered parts, but I didn't custom order this one. If I did, those would be there. But anyways, Clip on this one is darkened to match the front Zerk bolster, but I'm actually not sure how that's done. I'm pretty sure this is titanium, but it has this uh, soft blasted feel to it. So I suspect that this clip might be coated, but I'm just not 100% sure. Whatever it is though, I'm not a huge fan of it. It just kind of looks a bit out of place here. Like you take a step back, you kind of see it right here. It just, it works fine, but doesn't really feel like it matches the knife. And also, it's just another cheap bend spring clip. I would prefer one of his mill clips a lot more. This one just kind of has a cheap look to it. But like I said before, it works fine. It gets in and out of pocket easily, mostly due to that huge ramp that you see right there. That thing surprisingly never gets in your way. Like, it looks like it would be a huge hotspot, but it's well placed enough where it always lands in an area that has enough space for it. Like, here, over here. You just never really feel it. And that's probably the best thing a clip can be. Something that doesn't really get in your way. So, like I said earlier in the beginning, this knife carries very well. It's relatively thin and it's very slim. 
so it just really doesn't take up that much space in your pocket. The ramp on that clip will sometimes scratch you, like if you accidentally run your arm past your pocket, sometimes this thing will just kind of scratch you, but that's a nitpick. I also like how it has a back spacer. This thing just kind of keeps things away from the edge right here. For such a slender knife, you really can't touch any part of the edge when it's closed. It's a good design. You can touch the point if you really want to reach for it right here. But this backspacer actually does a really good job keeping random stuff away from the edge. That backspacer could be titanium, but I suspect that it's just steel. It looks different from the tie liner and the tie lock side right here. It just has a, like, a different tone to it. And back here, I think this could be rust on the back. I'm actually not sure about that either, but if it is rust, it was probably made worse by the working finish on it. I can't say I'm a huge fan of having a blasted steel backspacer just for that exact reason. Blasting opens up the pores in the steel and just makes it less corrosion resistant. And having that on a part that's normally contacting you, I don't know, it just doesn't really make much sense to me. But I guess having a different gray tone on the frame handle, I guess it's, it's neat, I guess. But, um, yeah. Anyways, moving on. So that's all the parts on it. As a whole, though, if you take a step back, I think this is a great design. In hand, there is no grip where this is bad. I can't find a single hot spot on it. In a saber grip, you're locked in. Those double choils down here, they do a fine job of keeping you there. It's basically perfectly done. They're chamfered on both sides. Like, you see a wide chamfer right here and a wide chamfer on the front. So they're perfectly done. There's no uncomfortable corner and the lock bar right here is actually perfectly level with the front side of the frame. It's not sticking up so it's not causing any voids or anything like that. And the back right here, it kind of has like this, kind of like a scallop right here, kind of shallow, but your fingers just land right on it and it kind of flares out in the back slightly. So no complaints there either. If you look back here, you can kind of see how the top line kind of has like that gentle sweeping arc to it. That just kind of, that's not just there for looks. If you have this in hand, you kind of feel how it matches the natural curve of your hand right here. So well done there as well. Even the flipper, it's well thought out when it's open. See how it's kind of angled away when you're holding it? It's angled away from your finger. So... Basically, it's kind of completing the main finger troll right here, but it doesn't hook back like some of the hind hinderers and hoebacks do. You just don't really feel restrained when you're holding this. You can do whatever you want. You move your hand around, and it's, you feel like you're free to just kind of do whatever. And that's a great feeling. Hammer grip is just as good. You can choke up as well, so there's no dead space on this knife. And that flipper right here comes into play again, because it gives you something to pull back on when you're up here. Because if it didn't have this, then this isn't really much of a finger choil right there. But since you have this all the way down here, it gives you something to pull back on. Without it, it just wouldn't really be as good. So when you have the edge up, it's great as well. Just got cradles or palm right here. Again, no hot spots. Reverse grip, just as good. I mean, we'll get my thumb back here just the way I like it. Another thing I notice is that the entire front of this thing is contoured. Like, it slaps out on the back, it's contoured on the front. Everything is rounded, so it kind of adds to comfort there as well. So it's thicker on the front than it is on the back, but in hand it feels like it's about the same. I have zero complaints about the design here. So I just gotta tell you guys right now, this Jason Clark Tonto you see right here, it's more or less perfect, at least for me. His fit and finish is great too. It's not perfect, you feel some of the transitions between the bolster and the scale over here. You feel that the back spacer isn't exactly dead flush with the back, but it's not really all that bad either. I'd say overall his work is very acceptable and even very good for the price here. Fitment of the lock is great too. Locks with zero up and down play to speak of. Lockup feels solid, it feels tight, it feels well done. But then you get to a problem here, and that's the pivot. So I've had a bunch of Jason Clark knives over the years, and especially on those older ones, I constantly have issues with the pivots. It's a couple different problems too. First up, they just don't really seem like they hold the tension very well. It's not uncommon for me to pick up a new Jason Clark, flip it a couple dozen times, and have the pivot loosen up on me. 
Sometimes the blade would get off center because of it and it would end up rubbing the inside of the frame and leave some nasty marks on the blade. Sometimes it would still happen even after I Loctite it once or twice. It's not the case all the time, but it comes up often enough for me to really bring it up here. Other times it's a free spinning pivot that's untooled on one side, so you can't really tighten the damn thing. This one belongs to a friend of mine. I know he had to send this one back to Jason for that exact reason. It loosened up and he couldn't retighten it because the other side just started spinning along with it. Other times it's like this one right here. There's side to side play but you can't really get rid of. The only way you can make it go away is to tighten it so much that you basically lose the action on the knife to a point where you can't really flip it. This one has very minor side to side play so it's only a slight case here but I've had others that were quite a bit worse honestly. I remember one knife in the past though, it had a ridiculously short pivot screw. Like that thing could have been holding it on by more than a few threads. That didn't really inspire much confidence. And all of this together just kind of makes his knives kind of disappointing for me sometimes. It ends up keeping me from really enjoying that action that his knives are known for. And all of this has ma is made worse by the fact that that pivot right there, it's hidden under the bolster over here. So every time I need to adjust it, I end up needing to mess with it. I end up needing to unscrew those two small screws to even reach the pivot screw underneath. And then after all that, I still need to put it back on. So it's all right if I'm adjusting it once in a blue moon, but with how often I need to fix some of these, it ends up being a huge pain. If you're going to do a bolster like this, it needs to be done right. You need to get that pivot done right. Or else that bolster just becomes a hindrance. To his credit though, I have seen improvement from Jason over the years. The pivots on his newer knives are noticeably better. I've had much fewer problems with his more recent work. And I've only heard good things about him personally, so even if you had to send it in, I've had my, my friend who had to send this one in, I've never dealt with him personally, but my friend who sent this knife in said that Jason is a great maker who stands by his work. And honestly, that means a lot to me. I want to know that a maker has your back. If a problem comes up, I want to know that it can be fixed. So even after saying all that, I can't help but recommend his work. I'm a fan of Jason Clark Knives. His stuff isn't always perfect, but it gets damn close, and it's always at a good price. I could name off a long list of makers charging you more for lesser quality. The man here, he just doesn't really charge that much for his knives. Like you can get both Damascus and Timascus on a Jason Clark for around like a thousand dollars and that's honestly unusual you see some of the crazy stuff he puts out like mosaic damascus stainless steel black timascus lock sides crazy carbon fibers and the price is like five or eight hundred dollars less than what you expect from someone else that's been around as long as he has he just doesn't seem like he wants to charge you much of an upcharge for his full dress builds and i respect the hell out of that you want to go try out a new material or crazy Damascus pattern? Jason Clark is one of the best makers to turn to for a custom order. Even on the secondary market, with how many knives the man puts out, you see a lot of Jason Clarks floating around at great prices. You can even find a ton of different models for only about like six to seven hundred, usually less than that too. And all of them are going to have decent designs, mid to high end materials, and a great action. They're not usually 100% perfect, I will say that, but the man puts out great work. If that sounds good for you, then I recommend picking one up. So that's all I got for you here. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.